Oh, hello there, Ecom. Boy, that's different. Good morning, Ecom! That's more like Woo! it. It's Intangible Commerce Wednesday! Hump day. <laughs> Hump day! Hump, 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 hump. Hump day. Like that Campbell, right? The Campbell guy? Mm-hmm. Mike, 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 Mike. <laughs> Mike, 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 Mike. <laughs> Do One you know what day things. it is? Update. Update. <laughs> well, I'll tell you a funny story about the mic thing. So my name is Ray, right? But whenever I go to like, I don't know, Chick-fil-A or places like that, or even coffee shops, they say, what's the name on the order? I always say Mike because they say Ray or Greg or Dave or Shane. For whatever reason, the name Ray doesn't resonate with these folks. So I say Mike because hmm. you can't really mess that up, right? I I couldn't do that because I'd forget what I told him and be sitting there waiting for my name. So I always go with Mike, which my middle name is Michael, so that's why I chose it. Okay. There's a so right behind the reason. Right. <laughs> but my kids always joke. They say, you know, Dad, one of these days we're going to go to one of these places and they're going to find out your name is not Mike and be totally devastated. Mm-hmm. Like, that's Mike, true. you've been coming in here for years. You're like, it's not Mike. It's Ray. <laughs> your name's not – what do you mean it's not Mike. <laughs> it's not you, my, you've home. met my children <laughs> yeah. we've made you drinks yeah. we've been making you coffee for eight years mike i mean ray, ray. <laughs> <laughs> they'll they'll demand a birth certificate like it's a 2008 election <laughs> whoa, whoa whoa hey 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 let's get stuff hey Speaking of catching up on some things we've been talking about, the, uh, the the Chinese goods getting into the American economy and just taking everything over, and my concerns about that, Indonesia, of all places, has said, hey, Ray, we feel the exact, I mean, Mike, we feel the exact same way that you do. Hmm. And they've introduced a ban, and I want to get your knee-jerk reaction, as I often like to do, Dave. Uh-huh. They've said... Anything coming from below a hundred dollars on e-commerce platforms imported into the country, if it's not at least a hundred dollars equivalent to their money, can't do it. It has to be a minimum purchase of one hundred dollars. What do you think about that? Wow. So that reminds me a lot about all the struggles that went on during Trump's tariffs and i don't mm. claim to be an expert on any of that but it does it reminds you of you are a scientist you, though correct people a lot of people don't know that ph mine's a ph e not a phd i don't know maybe it's physical ed i don't know but um but the the, the way you combat certain imports is by making it harder to get them so think about it you're not saying oh i'm not saying you can't do it Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, if you're going to do it, is it going to cost you a little? I mean, you need to make it a minimum, which really, to me, you want knee jerk. It's no different than free shipping for a hundred bucks, right? That's right. We've talked about That's that right. before. That's Everything, right. Everything you can put a minimum on anything, and that happens to be that minimum. I, do I right. like it? Or it not? I don't know. I, I, it pushes the consumers to go to the way that it's been done, right? In Indonesia, is the same as America. I'm an importer. I'm going to import and take the the cost of importing all these goods, and you buy them from me domestically. Mm -hmm. Indonesia said, we're going to protect our sellers. We're going to protect our small businesses and our economy by not allowing this price gouging, the reverse of it, to take place and destroy small businesses. And if you look at what's happening in India itself right now, it is being gutted by these low priced Chinese goods coming in and they don't care. The government does has no such control. And Mm -hmm. why I'm alarmed about this is because here in America, folks are not educated in the way of how this works with our economy and how Mm -hmm. bad these things like Timu, et cetera, are when the goods are not brought in domestically and distributed domestically. Correct. Well, and it affects us directly as well in our, in our day-to-day jobs. And so, I love the discussion around the global economy. Yes, it's a global economy. Right. But it, it ceases to be a global economy when you're the only country importing stuff 
and I don't get to touch it, and it goes directly to the end consumer. Then it's a one-way right. economy. I, that's the part that I don't think people get. And and if we need to look at any other example of what this is doing to our economy, as I'm sure most of our viewers and listeners know by now, yellow has gone. I coined this phrase on LinkedIn. It was kind of popular. Yellow, the trucking company that's been around for over 100 years, has gone belly up. Mm. No more yellow. Mellow yellow. Me, the yellow has mellowed to the point where they can no longer sustain business anymore. Uh, wanted to see if you had anything to kick us off with that topic, Dave. So a couple of interesting things on that. One is you look at – it's another one of the labor disputes. This one happened to blow up completely, right? They're all, To me, they're all bombs, right? Some get diffused, some don't. This yeah. was a big one. This was a big one. This one blew up. Um, and it's interesting that, A, it couldn't be saved. And number two, what was it, 700 and 770. 770 million dollars in, in loans. Bailouts. In, yeah. Um, well, yeah, loans. We call them bailouts. Well, but they weren't really bailouts. Where they were loans. They were loans. And hefty loans because the government took 30% stake in return yes. for that loan. That's right. That's exactly right. And did you know out of those loans that $230 had been paid toward principal mm -hmm. and $66 million paid toward interest? Oh. Wow. That's a I was big like, number. I was like, well, that sounds familiar. Sounds like Doesn't a home loan, right? You know, we all do it every day. <laughs> but, but it is interesting Boy, how, how someone got their money. But yeah, no, very, very bad news. Um, just it, it, it continues to intensify these these labor tensions that are all around. And I'm really worried about the, the fallout. I mean, what is this going to do? Well, and you should be, and I am as well. Because when you look at this as a whole, what is this saying, right? We've had UPS strike. We've had the FedEx, which they didn't strike, but the yep. FedEx strike, which did happen. Now we've got this event that, that took place where the union held out in – now, I do look at that and say, when you look at what Yellow is saying and what the union representatives are saying, you can see the infighting. Yellow is directly blaming the union and even going as far as to say that they deliberately sabotaged Yellow in their operation in order to shift and focus on the future. They're blaming the union and the union saying, why do we want people to be out of jobs? How does that make any sense? Mm-hmm. It's tearing yeah. people apart. Yeah, no, it's it's bad, and I I just worry that I hope this is not that little blip that you start to see more and more that all of a sudden this becomes a normal occurrence. We cannot have these big companies fail, especially in supply chain. Who picks up the slack? That's what I like to know. Who does? We actually just <laughs> talked about that recently, how there is a huge lack of, of actual carriers, LTL, over-the-road mm -hmm. full truck. There's not as many these days, and they keep falling and falling. Now, Yellow did make a good point, but I, I don't agree with how they blamed their consumers as well. One side, they said it's the union, but on the mm -hmm. other side, they said our customers are refusing to pay the higher rates, even though fuel's got up and we just can't afford it. Hmm. That's always an interesting, you know, as the, as a, a person like myself who would be on the opposite side, that would be a consumer to them if mm -hmm. I use their services. Uh, you look at the, the fuel surcharges and things like that. And you think, well, if that's a direct reflective doing business, that's fine. You know, that's just what it is. Now, the other thing, I don't know enough about the yellow business to say if they're overpriced or what it is, but were they charging too much? I don't know. Is somebody else out there low cutting? I don't know. And, and if that's Makes the case, wonder. That, that's going to happen to more and more companies. I'm telling you. They got consumed by run rate. They they could not keep up. They were making less money than they were spending. Mm -hmm. How much did the CEO of Yellow make? I wonder. Mm. How much did the CFO and the top brass, how much money did they make? Let's see if I can uh, look that up. I bet a lot. Um, 1.27 million, I believe, is 
one point two seven million dollars. Now that's not and, and and before people freak out, oh my god, raise one of those uh, uh, communists. No, no, <laughs> no, not at all, not at all. I believe you work hard, you you achieve a certain echelon, you ought to get paid more. And one point seven yeah. million dollars a year, while it's not anywhere near the worst out there. I mean, if you look at folks like Elon making over a billion dollars a year. Oh yeah, he could single-handedly oh, yeah. end hunger <laughs> by Correct. himself, but, Correct. but he won't. He, they, none of them will. But back to the point: when you look at these numbers of of salary and impact and and all these things, and, and trying to keep this company afloat, at what point does the company stop and do something simply for the good of its people? If it stops Correct. and says, "You know what, hey guys and gals and folks and all these, you're making over a million dollars a year." We're mm-hmm. going to bump that down for the next five years. You're going to make half as much. That's right. Still I've actually make been in those situations. Crazy amount of money. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, totally. I've actually been in a circumstance like that. I It wasn't me. Um, but actually, I even know of other companies during COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, I won't mention the names because it's kind of information I heard just because I did business with them. But very, very notable companies who basically said if you're at the top echelon of a C level you're working for nothing and everybody else took a 50%. I mean think about that. Wow. Yeah. It's impressive. So Well and I I'm really impressed with folks like uh the good people over at Texas Roadhouse, uh great steaks and get out there and and, and support mm. them because their CEO and top brass said we are not going to take a paycheck so we can pay our employees. There you go. So, th- so that they don't have to not have a paycheck. There you and go. And that's a great example of an organization that stands up and says, we're going to take care of our people because we care about our people. That's right. And those that, frankly speaking, are the companies that the generation of millennials and Gen Z, X, Y, whatever the heck it is, those are the types of companies that they're going to support. Uh-huh. And if you're that dinosaur mentality of, well, I'm Mr. and Mrs. CEO and I should be making $15 million a year and I'm going to continue doing that no matter what happens, you need to look at yourself in the mirror and think uh-huh. in the next 30 years, you could be under. It didn't take yellow long at all to get sank. No, no absolutely not. And, and, and in reality, every company should be looking, especially in the supply chain world, needs to look at this and say, okay, How do I protect myself, especially if you're publicly traded, right? Absolutely. How how do I protect myself? And then, again, how is this going to impact me? How is it going to impact the the entire, you know, e-com world? And how can I I overcome? And speaking of stock prices real quick, you brought up – we had talked about how right after the UPS deal came through, their stock price freaking tanked. Uh Mm-hmm. It is still not any better today. It, it's actually a little bit worse. <laughs> well, I think it'll take time. They mentioned that it's going to take a couple of weeks for them to completely ratify that deal. Yeah. And I think that's maybe that's what drives it. I don't know. Investors in their bloody uncertainty, right? Uh-huh. I heard Always the polar ice caps were shifting. I better pull all my money out of the market. Every single <laughs> penny. <laughs> like, it breaks. It melts. It freezes. It breaks, it melts, it freezes. Pull my money Correct. out. Pull it out. <laughs> Pull it out. Get out. Get out. Get out while you still... Danger. Danger, Danger. e-commerce. Danger, Danger e-commerce. <laughs> uh, and I think that's, you know, that's where we are. I mean, I think yeah. to pull everything back into to our day-to-day and what we see and what our customers are seeing, that's the name of the game right now is do I hold? Do I proceed? Do I build? Do I, you know, there's all these questions going on in all their minds right now. And I really can't give an honest opinion on what I'm seeing right now. That I've got a friend of mine, a financial advisor, um, really good guy here locally. I'd, I'd like to get him on the show and talk about the financial landscape and the market that people are facing right now. There is so much uncertainty. Nobody really knows what to do, what's up, what's down. And, and I think that the social anxiety is something we need to talk about because companies are going through this right now with their marketing teams. After the fallout of what happened with Bud Light and that whole situation, we don't need to rehash because everybody knows it. 
but everyone seems like they're really walking on eggshells. Have you noticed ads these days? Like for the last couple of weeks, anyway, it's been really bland, like bland. They're oh, just yeah. like, here's our product. Don't sue us. And that's I, it. I kind of <laughs> hope, hope this all stays in play until the Super Bowl so we can see the Super Bowl ad just be so boring. You know what I mean? And oh. like no one will take, no one will go out on an ed, on a on a ledge to do anything over the top. I, I would, I would myself would cry. Well, I mean, we're we're gonna have that though because we got the uh, the writers' union is on strike themselves that right too. now. That too. Everybody's. You know what, Dave? Oh, intangible commerce is going on strike. That's it. I'm taking my coffee, and I'm out of here. I'm out. I'm just gonna <laughs> click off here. Yeah, Go right. Ahead. I'm gonna, and I'm I'm burning this thing down. <laughs> That's right. But you're right. I'm not I making fun of folks going too. on strike. I do no, want to no, point no, that no. out. We support that. Like it's hey, you've got a right to be in a workplace that you find safe and that you're yep. making a wage that you can live and 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 not just survive. Right? There is a difference. A lot of folks out there are just surviving. Right. They don't have money to take their kids for ice cream let alone right. buy school supplies and new shoes and all the things that you I mean, it is miserable for millions yep. and millions of people. That's yep. got to change. And for that to change, corporate America's structure and culture has to change. Right. Yeah, there's a fine line and there's a way to probably bring it all together. I, you know, I hate the striking because it seems what, what I feel like is sometimes the striking hurts people way down the line. And, re and remember, too, it's not all about the company and it's also not all about the employees. It's what about the suppliers and their families and their supplier? I mean, it's a, you know, it all trickles. It's, it's like you, you talk about the writer's guild uh, going on strike. Well, there's all them, but remember there's all the people that work too in that industry. Yep. And it's like, I, I've never been good at trying to judge all that. Cause I've never been in a, in a position to where uh, I was unionized. I get it. Uh, and again, I'm I'm fully for for rights that are that are out there, but man, it just I just hope some of this comes to a halt soon. Well, absolutely, and you know um, when we look at the whole situation, right? COVID made a lot of folks introspective of their lives and what they're doing, mm -hmm. but then now we've got this insane inflation, and I don't care what you say everything is more expensive. Mm -hmm. Coffee's more expensive. Gas mm -hmm. is more. Eggs are more expensive. Everything is more expensive. But the wages have not gone up in connection nope. with that. No, nope. They just haven't. But nope. even the goods of these companies are more expensive. Yep. So let me get this right. The people at the very top echelon of these companies who are now selling their stuff for more money are making more money than ever. After COVID, right? more money than ever has been made. There's been more billionaires created in 2019 to now than any other part of our history as a people <laughs> ever. But at the same time, there's more suffering than any other point other than the Great Depression that we've seen since then in right. terms of wage disparity and recession. Yep. This is the worst. Yep. Something's got to give, and people are breaking. Yeah, no, I think t time will tell on a lot of that. And you're right; the whole COVID thing really added a, added a layer that no one expected. But at the same time, I, companies just got to get smarter. I mean, mm -hmm. they've got to start investing in the right technologies, which is why you know I'll tease future episodes. But you know, that's why robotics has been such an important play. You know, I, I've talked more about robotics in the last two years than I have in maybe my entire career. And I know that sounds crazy, but I'm dead serious. And even even every, every part of, of building a business around technology. You have to. And the robotics, you know, at one point, and I, I still take the standpoint of saying we need robotics to prop up the economy in a way that it would help us to grow. Now I say you need robotics and automation just to stay afloat because mm -hmm. you can't get people and when you can get people, they don't stay long. There, there's so like 50,000 drivers, truck drivers are needed right now. Mm -hmm. Yellow goes belly up. 
well, now we've got more truckers to fill in more jobs, but we've also lost a ton of truckers. Imagine yeah. those guys who are on the edge of, or in gals, right? Everybody drives trucks on the edge of retirement. And they're like, you know what? I'm just going to retire. I was going to do it anyway. Yeah. So now we've just lost a boatload mm -hmm. of truckers. Absolutely. We need even more. So Absolutely. To float our economy to keep us going. You need robotics. You need automation. You got to have that. Yep. You absolutely do, and you have to make smart business decisions, and you got to make God, sure yeah. that your yeah that your consumers, whoever your end customer is, if you're a three PL, if you're a you know a direct to consumer, if you got a product, get the product out the door as inexpensive. I hate to use the word cheap, but you know as inexpensive as you can, and at the same time leverage your labor the best you can because it's not unlimited anymore. God no, it is not. Which is interesting in uh, in the Asian market. It's like the last thing that they even care about is labor. But over uh -huh. here, it, it's in for the last couple of years. It's been the most talked about topic uh -huh. in, in in my in my calls. Dave, I both work in the software uh, industry and have a lot of experience helping folks build a go to market strategy when it comes to their fulfillment network in the warehouse and and, and other areas surrounding that. So. Give us some comments if you guys and gals and folks have some questions on that. Um, we'd love to be able to chat with you and just learn more about what you've got going on and how you see things in business. Do you agree or disagree that that we're in the worst part of a, an economy since the uh, since ever before, uh, yeah. leading up since the forties? But uh, absolutely. Lord, I think we are. But I really hope they do something about this team move. That really does bother me. Every day that goes by, there's millions and millions of dollars being funneled into the Chinese economy, taken from ours. Yep. And I don't need to be the one to say it, but China and Russia are their be very best of friends right now and, yep. and sharing even military drills together off of our yep. coast, damn near. Yep, yep. Absolutely. Well, I can honestly say I still haven't purchased anything from Timu. So that clock started uh, when I first learned about it, I think, from you. Um, yeah. <laughs> it, it wasn't that long ago. So I have been on it, but I haven't bought anything. So and I won't. Well, and now, I think that's the thing, too, like giving even even the traffic to their site and allowing for advertising dollars to be spent. Like when you look at that marketing machine, think about your average YouTuber, right? Smaller channel or whatever. Making I, I a buddy of mine is uh, is on YouTube. Uh, shout out Mike Bracken, the horror geek. Love that channel, by the way, the horror geek. If you ever want to find some lighthearted humor, uh, he reviews old horror movies that oh are kind of campy and goofy. Yeah, but then yeah. some more modern ones too. Really cool. love that channel. Uh, but I'll get That's on, awesome. you know, and you look at the marketing dollars being spent on a lot of these and it's, 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 it's exhaustive because just people going to the site is going to allow for us to, uh, uh, marketers rather. So I lost the word to buy ad space. Yep. That's right. The whole thing it, needs it to be stopped. To really. Yeah. It starts to expand that entire market as it relates to not only are they stealing I say stealing, but are they taking that that revenue? But now they're taking the marketing revenue, which can be huge. And it's it uh, any way massive. They want. Yeah, I love it when I'm in the middle of a podcast and I got dogs barking in the background. So <laughs> somebody must you be. You know what? Though no door. one cares. Maybe we can talk about that on a, on another episode. How the the this the Zoom style I call it Zoom oh, style. Yeah. You know, is so interesting because no one cares about the dog bark anymore because we all got it. My, you're lucky mine haven't barked. And yeah. every, everybody's so used to it now. It's like, oh, no big deal. You don't even hear it, right? You don't even hear uh, it. I've been dogs. on calls and people say, hey, I'm sorry about my dogs. I'm like, oh, oh, oh that, did they that, bark? That was yours. I thought that maybe it was mine. Yeah, no <laughs> I one didn't even know. Knows. No one or cares. Or the babies in the background and all that. Nobody cares. It just proves we're human, Ray. It just proves hey. that we're just normal dudes. Well, I have confirmed through medical science that I do indeed have a heart. Oh, well, congratulations. I have high blood pressure. Oh, well, <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't we all? Well, I will actually, I will say had high blood pressure. Oh. Because I don't anymore. Nice. Through diet well, and exercise. Very I have nice. gotten rid of my high blood pressure. You beat it. I beat it, but this economy keeps bringing it back. Oh, yeah. It'll give it to you. Every time that's we talk why we're about here. Timu. 
We're here to help people get over their anxiety-driven high blood pressure about e -com. Medical disclaimer, intangible commerce does not intend to reduce your high blood pressure. <laughs> we will really not lower your blood pressure. <laughs> it will not lower your blood pressure. <laughs> we got to give like a, this it is not medical it. advice. <laughs> it might. It might. We had to give like a medical disclaimer at the start of every single episode now. We are, we are not responsible if your funny bone acts up during an episode. <laughs> I find that quite humorous. Oh, hey. No. hey, and See what... <laughs> that's usually when you end the podcast. When we start getting too goofy for even my own mm -hmm. taste, then I will say, Dave, send them away on this bombshelving episode. We talked about how a hundred year old company sank because of a couple of things in fighting greed and maybe just a little bit of mismanagement. And everything all the way down to how China is is uh, oh, personally attacking our U.S. economy uh, through One of cheap is still being goods. recorded because you're not yeah. moving. Oh, uh oh, where'd you go? I totally hey. didn't see you. Oh so no! If you, if you plugged me for something, you were like stopped. It looked like you were singing. Actually, it was kind of like a. I w I was I, I was giving you a whole. T there was a whole melody there that that you missed, and it's a good thing. I know. That, I've got good software because the viewers you won't have any idea. Oh, uh, that whole thing. Just go straight into, I'll just go straight into, and with that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and on that bombshell, it's time to end. Yeah. Send them away, oh. Dave. Hey, good times. Everybody keep tuning in. Remember, Ray's going to hit a Costco. We're going to talk about robotics, mm. and we're going to have some special guests coming on. So We have got some tuned. guests lined up. Stay tuned for next Stay episode tuned. of Intangible Commerce. Ecom away!